Hello students, <clears throat> I welcome you all to our fourth lecture, that is a uh, introduction to moments, couples, uh, resultant force, and at maybe at a later stage I will introduce you to a cross product. After that, then you also need to understand and apply what we call the triple scalar product. Then also just maybe to, to, to make you uh, remember one or two things, I'll also explain uh, what uh, I mean by the, the term internal and external forces. Because each and every member, each and every structure, each and every infrastructure, each and every building, there are internal and external forces involved. The internal, of course, would be the forces within the, 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 the member itself, while the external would be the forces like the supports, those which are supporting the same member. Before I, uh, I continue with uh, our lecture A4, I would want to take you back. Lecture 3, we looked at our pos position vectors, vectors directed along a line. From that, we also looked at uh, the dot product, which is A dot B. At the end, after you do your calculations, you are going to get what we call a scalar product and not a vector product. I will also remind you that if you do the I dot I, you would get one. The I unit vector is normally that vector along the X axis. The J is the one along the Y axis and the K is the one along the, the Z axis. So, if you do a dot product of j dot j, you'd get a 1. k dot k, you'd get a 1. But if you do a dot product of i dot j, or j dot k, or k dot i, or k dot j, or k dot i, you would get a 0. I explained why it is like that. If you remember, A dot B is equals to A times B times cos theta. And all of us, we can remember the angle, an example, if I say zero degrees, what is cos zero and what is cos 90? That is where you are going to have the I dot I to be 1 and the I dot J to be 0. And you also need to remember that the angle that we are talking about is from 0 up to 180 degrees. Then also the scalar product itself, which is the dot product, the laws that are applicable it is one, it is cumulative, it is also distributive, and it can also be applied by a scalar. I also want to remind you that we are using the dot product to find the angles between two vectors. Also, we can, we can use the same product to find the projection of one vector onto another. And also, there are also examples that, uh, that I shared where you are calculating vectors which are parallel or perpendicular to a given vector. Yeah. So I, I, I hope all of you, 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 you understand. At least you, you had time to go through. Yes, I know it, it is very difficult for you to understand just at once. But find time to go through, then you would appreciate that the, the dot product it is not complicated as you thought. Yeah, so basically the objectives of this lecture is of course to discuss the concept of, uh, of, of moments. That is of course uh, looking at uh, two dimensions and three dimensions. Yeah, 
you will realize that if if you 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 want to calculate a moment in 2d it becomes easier because we know that we just need to multiply the force times the perpendicular distance to the point where we want to get that moment but in 3d it's something complicated if we'd want to calculate a moment just by using the perpendicular distance times the force you would find that in 3d we are now going to introduce you to what we call the cross product and not the the dot product but the cross product and also you will also be able to understand and calculate a moment about a specified axis you will also be able to understand and find a moment of a couple lastly you will also be able to find the resultant effect of a non-concurrent force system the chapter itself it came up with some introduction Treatment of bodies as a single particle is not always possible. Why is it like that? We are taking you back from, if you can remember, we used to teach you about a, a structure being a, a particle. Right? But this time we are introducing you into the real stuff, where we are not looking at a particle, but we are looking at a, a body. So, in general, the size of a body and the specific objectives of application of a force should always be considered. That is, in reality. The introduction was for you to understand so that maybe from that background, you could, you could easily get something and apply the same principles. So, what a particle means it was something that was you are imagining to say this is a structure we are going to sort it we are going to solve a problem as a particle but we are now changing from a particle we are now bringing the actual structure most bodies in elementary mechanics are assumed to be rigid and when you say rigid you know what it means something that is not when you apply an impact, it won't deform. But deformation is always there. We take it that it's quite small. So, in this chapter, we will study the effect of forces exerted on a rigid body and you will learn how to replace given forces system by a simple equilibrium system, of which by now, So, in this lecture, we will learn how to how the forces can be replaced with a simple equivalent system. That is a moment about a point, a moment about an axis, a specific line, and the moment of a couple. All these three things you understand. Moment about a point, this is a moment about point O, point B, point C. Moment about an axis about a line. Then you want about a couple. These are two forces acting in same uh, same magnitude but opposite direction. And note that the determination of these quantities involves the quantitation of vector products, scalar products, of which you know there are two ways of solving these problems: either scalar products. Or using a, a smell and a, 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 or rather vector analysis. Of course, another concept introduced in this lecture is that of a couple. Any system of forces acting on a rigid body can be replaced by an equivalent system consisting of one force acting at a specific point and one couple. I can take you back to the notes where I, I explained about a free vector. 
those are the couples that we are talking about. It doesn't matter where the couple is, you can move it and take it wherever for as long as it is within the specific body. In the case of concurrent, complana, you, you, I'm sure you understand what the concurrent, complana, complana is along the, the same plane. Well, pyro forces, you know what pyro means. The equivalent force couple system can be further reduced to a single force code by resultant of the same system or a single couple called the resultant couple of a system. This is what I was just trying to explain. I think I explained about this, but maybe just to emphasize, forces acting on a rigid body are divided into two groups. There are external and internal forces. External forces, those are the supports. Internal forces, those are the forces within the body. So, in this course chapter, chapter, or rather lecture 4, it has got nothing to do with internal forces. It has got something to do with external forces. Chapter 5. Chapter 6, Chapter 7, and Chapter 8. That's where we are going to consider internal forces. We are looking at a more a, a structure itself than working on the, the members. Those are internal structures. I think I explained about the principle of transmissibility. This is very simple. Of, I'm sure... All of you understand why there are three guys pulling a vehicle. On that vehicle, it has got a weight, that is a W. Then where the wheels are passing, there is a reaction R1 and R2, and the F is where you are pulling. This is the same principle that I was explaining. The principle of transmissibility, where you apply a force within the body. For as long as that force is being applied along that line, it's still going to create the same reaction. Then, there was an explanation of how to calculate uh, moments using a scalar method. A scalar method is very simple. It's just by multiplying where the force has been applied multiply times the perpendicular distance to where you are getting your moment to the force where or the line where that force has been applied. So in this case there is a dy and there is a fx. So to get a moment you multiply you by you multiply that is the the, the, the moment The moment will be equals to the force in that case. When you look at this, that will be a D mod, mod, Sorry for that. Just checking on something to see if maybe my my system is working according. Just trying to raise. Okay. So, I was saying it's supposed to be a moment multiplied times the, the force and the perpendicular distance. So, in this case, you can see that there is always a, a D. There is a D there and there is an F there. There is a D there and there is an F there. But when you look at this, it's showing you that where the application of F is not creating any moment. Why? A moment is all about rotation. It's all about a tend to, to make that particular structure 
to rotate. So when this guy, this guy is pushing, is not creating any moment. So in that case, the moment is zero. I think this is almost the, the, the same principle we are talking about the right thumb rule. We understand about this. Then here we are talking about the resultant moment. Now you look at there is F1, F2 and F3. Then this is our center which is O. Find the resultant moment. How do you find the resultant moment? It's very simple. Resultant moment will be equals to moment 1 plus moment 2 plus moment 3. What is moment 1? Moment 1 will be equals to you go to where 1 is. That is F1 times d1 you do the same for moment 2 which will be equals to f2 multiplies times d2 you add that then you get your resultant moment which is this guy but always take note of signs directions when you look at F1, according to what we agreed, F1 is in the position that we know that is counterclockwise, which is positive. F3 is also in the position that we agreed to be counterclockwise, positive. F2 is also in the direction that we agreed to be negative, that is counter, that is, uh, so that is uh, clockwise. That is negative. Then you get your moment. These are just applications of which I said wherever you are staying, there's a house where there's any empty space, they have put a structure which is supporting the loads above. It can be a house, it can be a church, whatever. But you always find this. Where there is the opening, whether a window, a door, there is that structure there. So this F is representing the load above that opening. And you will learn in chapter, I think this is supposed to be lecture, lecture 5, lecture 6. That's where we are going to, to work on concentrated loads. This is another application where I give you an, uh, how to solve it. Then these are simple uh, examples that I said determine the moment of a force about point O. Looking at uh, starting from A, B, C, D, these were basically trying to explain or to make you guys understand how to solve these problems in terms of scalar methods that is a moment will be equals to the force multiplied to that perpendicular distance where the, that force has been applied so this one is very clear the first one very clear because this is o so the force here or rather the moment will be equals to 2 multiply times 100 when you come to the next one, it's very simple. We are looking at the perpendicular distance to where our our O is. So in this case, here our moment would be the distance from where our force has been applied. It's not two meters. We look at where our our force is, so which is going to be zero point seven five and a fifty which is also applies to the next one a moment will be equals to you're adding two there because where o where o is then where your 40 pound is so it will be a four plus 
you are adding which one are you adding because you are looking for the perpendicular distance from where you which is this distance so you are also looking for this which is plus 2 cos 30 degrees that you, you do the same with moment day at O looking at this one the perpendicular distance where O is is only it cannot be this no is from this to that so it will be the force multiplied times that is sine 45 for this one very simple that will be moment equals to 4 4 minus 1 that is your 3 right multiply times the 7 then you get your moment I think that's how they, they are getting all the then this is an example determine the certain force about force acting on a on a uh, on a road shown above determine the resultant moment of four forces there is a 50 a 20 a 60 and a 40 And they are telling me it's supposed to be about about O. So summation of moments should be equal to moment one plus moment two plus moment three plus moment four. How do we get moment one? Moment one, I'm going to take it. Uh, to be maybe let me say the 50 right so this is the the 50 so the perpendicular distance from where my center o is it will be 50 by 2 meters when i come to m2 will be equals to the m2 i'm going to take it to be a 60 so a sikiste, when you look at where the sikiste, where the force is being applied, is along, along where O is. So it will be sikiste multiplied to zero. This zero simply means this force is playing along, along where I'm getting my, my moment. M3, M3, I would say maybe it's 20. I would say 20 multiply times the perpendicular distance from my center to where 20 is passing. This distance, how do you get that distance? How do you get that distance? You have already a triangle. Where this is 3, right? Then there is a 30 degrees. We are looking for, we already have, we already have a 2 plus 2 which is 4 so we need to get this distance which happens to be this one and we know that that one is is that and we know that this one is also that I think this is basic uh, mathematics. This is the degrees. Then you are looking for this guy who happens to be X. With that 30, it will be a cos. Right? 
right? Multiply times a3, then you get your, your moment 3. Then you do the same for moment 4. I think this is how you are getting it. Then, another example. A 100 Newton vertical force is applied to the end of a lever which is attached to a shaft at O. Determining moment about O. Moment about O. This force is 100. It's going like this. This is also our our O. So a moment about O. So the first one will be M about O will be this distance. Find this distance. I'm going to call it T X times 100. How are you going to find that X? You, you already have a 60 degrees there. Right? Which is supposed to be a 24 cos 60. You have your X. Horizontal force about A which creates the same moment. Horizontal, horizontal meaning moving in that manner. Which creates the same moment. The moment that you are going to get there, you are only going to be looking for a force which is going to apply vertical. You know the moment. We know it. Right? For us to find a moment, scalar is the moment by the, sorry, the force by the, the distance. So now we already have this, right? And we have been told that the force is also going to be horizontal. So we'll be looking for D, which is the distance from where A is to here. We know this distance already. So we're just looking for F. Very simple. Smallest force at A, which produces the same moment. You remember about T, for you to apply a minimum force, when you are trying to produce the maximum result, is by creating a 90 degrees, 90 degrees force. I think the solution is Then, we come to the vector product or the so-called cross product. When, when I just introduced the cross product, all of you, you, you get scared. I don't know why, because it's something new, because you are coming from a dot, now there's a cross. So it's something that is going to disturb you. The principles. We can't just bring anything for you guys to learn which has got no application. The reason why you brought it here, it, it's an easier way of getting moments, couples, result and force in 3D. Using a scalar method is very difficult. You can't even see where Y, where X, and where Z is. So, they created this, these equations to easy your work. So, in short, this cross product, how it works, you are going to have a P and a Q. If you remember in our, in our dot product, we are using a, a course. 
But in this product or this function, you are using a sign. So you can differentiate between a sin 90 and a cos 90. This is where this is coming from. But even if you want to think beyond your, your, your capacity, the simple way of you understanding is we are going to use a cross product to calculate moments. For now, just understand that you are going to use it to calculate moments using the vector analysis, not a scalar method or analysis. So I think this is the same principle using the, 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 the right arm rule where they were explaining how you get a moment. Here, they are trying to emphasize to remind you that always, always when you do a cross product, that product will be perpendicular to that plane. So they are showing you there is Q and P, then the V is always perpendicular, perpendicular to the plane where P and Q is. And always consider the right thumb rule. This also applies to the dot product where the angle, the theta, is between 180 degrees to zero. If you find an angle which is more than 180, there is something wrong. Then, here, they are explaining something. Always, when you start from, you can see where the, 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 the right thumb rule is starting from. From A to B. This is showing you that you are starting from A going to B. So, even as you are doing your cross product, start from A cross B. Not opposite or otherwise. If you do that, you are going to find a different answer. So always start from using the right thumb rule where you are starting from A, then cross B. Take note of that. Take note of this. Don't forget. Always start from the right thumb rule is showing you you are going to start from A going to B. So in this case, we agree this positive. And where we are going there, the UC, that is our, our unit vector. Which is always supposed to be perpendicular to our plane AB. Then these are the, the laws that you are supposed to apply. I think I mentioned one. You can't multiply, you can't do a cross product A cross B to find the same answer. When you do that, you are going to find a negative, which is not correct. Then in terms of distributive, they are workable. They are not associative. They only work in terms of a scalar. You know what a scalar is? That's just a magnitude, which has got no direction. And it states here, it is important to note that the proper order of cross product must be maintained since they are not commutative and not associative for cross product. This now is just trying to show you on how to, to use your, your cross product in the Cartesian notation. We know i times j is going to give you a k. How is it going to give you a k? From what, I, from what I've just explained was when you do a cross product, i and j, that is the x and the, and the, the y axis. So, 
the line which is perpendicular to i and j is what? Is k. If I do a cross product x and y, I we expect to get a product which is perpendicular to x and y. So, x and y, there is only one product which can, of which all of us we know, that is the zx. This is what it means. So, i times j, it will be k. So, when you go back to your i and j, sign 90, sign 90, if you can remember your, 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 your trigonometry and your mathematics from the first year, uh, mathematics, it will tell you that it's 1, which is going to give you, you are going to have 1. Then, when you do I and I, that simply means I cross I, the angle in between is 0. Sin 0, you know what sin 0 is. J cross J, you know what sin 0 is. K cross K, you know what sin 0 is. And take note of this. We always start from K I J. K I J. K I J. When you move from K to I, positive. From I to J, positive. J to K, positive. When you are reversing that, it's always negative. That's why you'd find I J positive. J K positive k j negative note that so like here so here we are just trying to explain on how they calculated this they they, they, they did a cross product a cross B and they got they ended up getting that where you're going you know that sign 90 and sign 0 so certain elements were falling out we are coming out now instead of you memorizing everything just keep this in mind. This is a cross product. Just keep that in mind. And how you do it, all of us, I'm sure, we know about this determinant and how to solve it from our simple basic mathematics. If you, you want to get I component, right? Right? Then if you want to get the, the J component, the J component, you close that. Sorry for that. Let me erase something. Then let me do something. Yeah. If you want to close that, it will be from there. It will be from there. This thing, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, it will be from there. Oh, okay. If we close this, so if we close this and that. So it will be this guy going like that. That will be the, the J component, which will be, of course, be A, X, B, Z, always a minus, then A, Z, B, X. Then... You come to the last one. You come to the last one.
we come to the last one which will be you close that so what is going to happen now is that and that so in the k it will be the a ax then b y minus a y b x then you close but always don't forget that a j is always a, a negative always is a negative so here the, 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 they were just trying to explain on how you get the determinants this is what i have just from explaining how you get your i you get your j then you get your k always don't forget about this guy here it's always negative so after understanding all those stuff now we come in for you guys to to understand how to get a moment using R. What is R? All of you, all of us, you understand what R is. R is a position vector. How do you get a position vector? A position vector is by getting coordinates from point A to whatever point where that force has been applied. nothing different the, the way you find your error your position vector this is how you get your position vector the first one it was a a scalar where it was a moment force by perpendicular distance but now is error error times the force which is a moment vector. So a moment vector, you know what a vector is. And you know that you can differentiate between a vector and a scalar. A moment always supposed to give us some directions. So now we are looking at vector scalar. We, I, sh I showed you on how to calculate using a scalar. Now we are trying to solve this problem using vector analysis we know what a vector is and we can differentiate between a vector and a scalar hope this is right So, in this case, when you look at our, our sketch, we have got our moment, MO, then we have got a force F, then we have got our R, then we have got the other D there. For, for me, I would say forget about the D, because that D... That's the one that you are using to calculate a moment using the scalar method. But now we are using R, that is using the scalar method. So in that case, where this force is going, that F, I don't know where the force is going. If I can have coordinates here and where O is, if I'm going to have a line, I'm going to get the same moment about O coming from the same force F. Not that. It is not about where the force is. When you are using a vector analysis vector method is where that force is passing. When you can get coordinates wherever it is you are going to get the same moment. Is going to give you the same reaction.
So here we are just trying to explain further on using the right term rule. Here is showing you about the D, that is the scalar method. This R, that is the moment analysis or moment or vector method. And here, someone is trying to emphasize there, saying the moment vector is perpendicular to the plane. I think I explained that. Always a cross product, the product that you are going to get is always perpendicular to that plane. Then how you formulate in the vector? Very simple. Can you remember about the principle of transmissibility? Can you remember about the principle of transmissibility? These are very simple things. If a force is passing, you can see where this force is passing. This F. I don't know where it's going. Then you're asking me to get a moment about O. Oh, this is where this... Then I know coordinates about this. If I can have coordinates about this and coordinates about this. The first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to get the R. Which R is that? I'm going to get coordinates of this and that. Then I get G. That will be the position. Then I do a cross product where the force vector is. I'm going to get the same answer. It doesn't matter. Even if you get it here, you get the your R to be here. This can be R1. This can be R2. Or this one, this whatever are, it doesn't matter. This principle, it works. That did not make you guys get confused. This principle works. Then here, I think we are just trying to explain about how to to use the the determinants i, j, k. And I'm sure all of us we know at the end you end up with you get a moment like that. But don't don't memorize this. Don't memorize this stuff. It won't help you. Just get the principle, which is that once you know this, and you know when you want to get that, and you do that, what you are going to do is you start from the ara. Then you go like that. Then again, if you do, you, you go to the J, you do the same, it will be that. Then you come to the last one, which happens to be the Z, which is K, right? You have closed D, K, R, Z, F, Z, so it will be. it will be something like that. Then here, it was just an explanation on how you solve this. How you can add the moments. This principle, this principle and this principle, it doesn't matter, they are the same. They are just showing you that there is R1, R2, R3. And there were three different forces. Right? Then an example. Two forces act on a road shown in the figure. Determine the resultant force they create about the flange at O. We are talking about O. Express the results as a Cartesian vector. Very simple. This question F1 is already in Cartesian notation. F2 is already in Cartesian notation. So, the first thing that you do, you do, that will be maybe R1, and that guy will be R, R2. 
So you find your R1 and R2. How do you find your R1? You know how to get R1. The first thing that you do, you get coordinates O, 0, 0. Then R1 is going to A. The coordinates at A, 0, 5, 0. You have R1. You get R2. Then you do the cross product. You already have this in force vector. Simple as that. Simple. The next one. Determine the moment of a force F about O and P. Express the result under the Cartesian vector. The force already has been expressed as a vector. The question is saying is, determine the moment of a force F, which is already in a vector form, about O and P. Get coordinates about O and get coordinates about P. O we always know I think is supposed to be that. Then P is supposed to be this. Then then we get our R O O P. Yeah, because the question is asking about O and P. So no 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 O P. We are getting a mom we are getting a moment force about O and P. So in this case it will be O A and another R P A. Yeah, when you are getting a moment about O, you use this one. When you are getting a moment about P, you use this one. You do your cross product and you have the answer. This one is very simple. Determine the moment of a force F acting the door hinges at A and B expresses out in Cartesian. These are very simple. The first thing that you do your F, which is 80 pounds, change it into, into Cartesian notation. How do you change it into Cartesian notation? Get coordinate C. C. Mm, when I look at it, there is a zero there. Then in the Y is a negative. There is already a three. Then plus cos, if I'm right, 45. Yep, I'm, 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 I'm getting this distance. That is the, the y. So there's already a 3 there. That's the one that I'm adding. Then a cos. There's supposed to be some figure here. Which is supposed to be this. Which is 4. Yeah. So that guy is 4. I have the I have the X. And I have the C. You do the same. Then this example, I think I explained. I explained it to... It, 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 when you view it from the plane, you are going only to see X and this is y then x then you have your handle 
then another application there which is uh, this is 90 and this is 15 when you extend this guy right then you do you f then you come back here you'd find that this is also 15 that is 90 I think I explained about this. Yeah, so this example, it, 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 might, uh, it might look to be a bit uh, uh, complicated, but just find time, go through, go through, I'm sure you, you understand, and you conclude that it is very, it, it's a very simple it, it's, it's a very simple uh, problem but i know the way it is you know it will be people would think maybe there's some magic there there is no magic just go through understand why is it sign 15 why is it cos 15 someone else is going to think where we are supposed to have the sign that's where we are supposed to, to use the course there is no magic just try to go through then you 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 you, you will understand I, I i just decided to to split this lecture we are supposed to have about 70 slides but i decided maybe just to split maybe we end here uh maybe uh, maybe uh, after 47 uh, slides then next part will be we'll look at the principles of uh, of moments of course all, all of us we understand that uh, uh, you might find a situation a problem where there are more than two forces and you need to to to, to calculate to know the moment as a result of those forces then apart from that we're also going to look at a moment about a specified axis this one uh, we are just going to add where we will now use both that is the the dot product and the cross product so it will be something like uh, it will be something like uh, a moment about an axis let me say a which is maybe to be something like that a moment about an axis i can say maybe a this would be equals to the unity vector about a then dot then we open our bracket then our r cross f this is just the same as the way you you you'll be calculating the moment using the, the the cross product which will be the the unit vector about a dot the moment about about a then also we we'll also look at uh, moment of a couple and how to represent the same couple moment as vectors then the last one will also look at uh, resolution of forces into a force and couple system then i would say we are done with our lecture with our lecture four these are four dash four four dash twelve four dash fifty eight these are questions that you have on the book that i shared the recommended book the 14th edition of russell so find time go through go through these uh, uh problems they will help you to understand the concepts thank you i end here for now